it's in my opinion it's not really necessary to get a degree but if you were to select one i would recommend just getting like any kind of generic information technology degree like you don't necessarily have to specialize in like uh, networks or like database management per se because especially in your your first job usually people tend to start off in like kind of a help desk like like analyst capacity so um just a generic it degree and then secondary to that i would recommend getting a business degree um if you if you want to get a degree right um business degrees are good because i the whole like purpose of it is to kind of facilitate business and provide like some kind of platform like technology to help drive the business like help the money makers like make money more easily and with a business degree it kind of um kind of helps you like open your brain a little bit and think about things in a more holistic way instead of just like technology is cool i like computers like it helps you to kind of think about um the business and like why technology and, and it exists in the first place so IT degree or, or business degree, it would be pretty good for IT. Also like uh, a degree is like really good to have, but the opportunity cost tends to be pretty high. That means it, it takes you um, a decent amount of time to get the degree when you could have spent that time like doing something else. Um, so because IT is not really regulated like the medical field, like you have to, you know, you have to go to um, residency and you have to get a degree and to be a lawyer you have to like pass the bar and have a degree like with IT you don't really need a degree so um, if you want a degree that's really good um, but if you just wanted to get into the IT field your time might be better spent getting like an entry-level certifi certification like CompTIA A plus or, or something like this. Hey guys, Shane from the future. Really quickly, I wanted to say that there are a few resources down in the description. It'll be at the very top that I think are good when it comes to IT. One of them is going to be a certification that is very common and it's a good way to kind of dip your toe into IT and see if it's the right thing for you. And it can also help you to get an entry-level job or maybe an internship. And then the other one is a website that allows you to quickly test out of different classes at a fraction of the cost at study.com so definitely check out both of those down in the description below got it okay well that segues into the next question which is extremely important which is what actually matters when it comes to getting a job so we're talking about internships grades work experience projects volunteering out of those things, what actually matters when the, in the IT field specifically when it comes to getting your first job right out of college or maybe right after getting your certification? So the way I think about getting your first job in IT, there's a bunch of different kind of endeavors that you can do. And the different endeavors are kind of split up into two main goals. Like the first goal is to, it's really simple, but like the first goal is to get an interview. And then the second goal is to pass the interview. And I kind of split it up like this because there's certain things that you, that you can do that will help you get an interview, but won't really help you pass the interview and then vice versa. Um, of course, like networking is the most powerful thing to get a job, but I'm not going to talk about that because I, I don't really like do a lot of networking myself. Like, I mean, like social networking with people. So um, things that you can do to like get the interview um, is, you know, make your resume look as good as possible. So for example, um, if you don't have any IT experience, you can always kind of generate your own IT experience. Like you can do a little, you can learn something simple and do like a little project by yourself. Like for example, like experiment with like Amazon or AWS or sorry, AWS or Azure or something. And then maybe like figure out how to do something simple, like create a storage account and maybe write like a little blog post about it. And you can put it on, on LinkedIn or something. Then you can put on your resume, just like little things like this you can do to get experience to put on your resume. And then especially for your first job, I would recommend getting some kind of certification, like a really entry level one, like CompTIA A plus. Those things will like be like super invaluable for you like to get, at least get the interview because you'll have like kind of experience and at least some kind of credential. So that's, that's the getting the interview part. And then the second part, like once you've gotten the interview, to pass the interview, you can do like a lot of like really simple things like, you know, polish your physical appearance and those kind of basic things. But what I would recommend, um, especially if you're going for like a help desk or some kind of help desk analyst job is to get like a whole bunch of practice questions, like a hundred, um, actually have some, so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll give you a link and maybe you can put that in the description or something, but sure. I'll get like, yeah, whole bunch of practice questions and just kind of go over the questions like in preparation for your interview like not only to kind of learn the answers if you don't know them but um 
practice like saying the answer out loud so you get really good at articulating yourself during the interview um because if you go over like 100 help desk questions they're probably going to ask something within here and then when you've already like kind of went through like thinking about how you'd answer and like practice saying it to yourself it becomes like really easy once you get into the actual interview and you you don't have to you don't have to spend your precious like brain cycles like thinking about how to answer it you can you know offload that because you practice it already and just automatically answer and then you can use your brain power for other things like maybe thinking of questions for them or thinking of like ways to relate to the interviewer or just like you can be more more relaxed and kind of show them your personality more if you've already kind of practiced uh, the process, if that makes sense. So just those two phases, focus on getting the interview, things that you can do, and then focus on like passing an interview, practice questions and, you know, clean, you know, clean yourself up, I guess, as much as possible. <laughs> so when it comes to uh, mistakes that either you or maybe other people you've worked with have made, um, what are some of the pitfalls that you commonly see when it comes to getting into IT? This is an interesting question. Like the pitfalls that I think of might be different than what somebody else might think of, but I notice a lot of people, like they come into IT and they get like a job in a certain area and they have like some kind of expectation for what they're gonna be doing and like what's gonna happen. But very often than not, like the reality of like what happens in the business is like way different than kind of what you imagined when you're going to school. Like you see like all these memes on, on LinkedIn, like, um, data scientists, like what you imagine and like reality and the reality is like a bunch of boring stuff, like making reports that are boring and like interfacing with like management and stuff like this. Um, so I, I think one of the biggest pitfalls is like not having an open mind and then you, you do a job and then when your actuality differs from your expectation, it, it tends to like stress people out quite a bit. And um, that just leads to, you know, if you get the more stress you get, the more quickly you get like burned out and like, uh, you know, disgruntled or whatever. So, um, just, just try to keep an open mind, I suppose, uh, just kind of be open to, to anything and think about everything holistically, like why your position exists and like what you're doing to like facilitate the business. And you can kind of avoid that a little bit. I totally agree. And that's one thing I've noticed with a lot of different careers. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but with a lot of careers, especially when you're on the entry level, like the first few years, you're probably not going to be doing work that you absolutely love. You know, you're going to have to go through the, those first two years, uh, get that experience. It's kind of like that catch 22 situation where you need two years of experience to get the job. But in order to get two years of experience, you have to have the job. Um, but after you get those first few years of experience, you have a lot more flexibility and a lot more freedom um, and a lot of different careers with uh, people that I've talked to. Would you say that's true? Yeah, I would, I would say that's true. Just like, like you're saying, like, um, maybe you, you're getting into IT for like the first time and you want to be like a, a network engineer or something. So you get your CCNA and you learn about all these like kind of advanced routing protocols, like, um, EIGRP, you get really good at configuring that. And then you get your first engineering, like network engineer job. And then they just have you like, uh, doing configs or something. Um, cause it's not really, it doesn't make sense for them to like throw you onto the core router to like start configuring EIGRP cause you're like new. Um, so that kind of like perception is like, can be weird. And then, uh, also for sure. Yeah. Like, when you get that ex experience, um, it, it really like opens up your, your possibility to work like many different places. And I, I've come to find kind of the more, you know, or the more no, you know how to do, um, people will, they'll see that you know something and they'll try to hire you for something else, even if you don't know how to do that thing, but they'll base it on like the fact that, you know, you were able to like, you know, learn EIGRP and OSPF and then work in like a 10,000 user environment. They're like, he must be able to like learn how to do mobile device management. So they'll like pitch you jobs for like kind of other things, if, if that makes sense. Um, the more experience you get, the more kind of opportunity like really opens up. So what would you say in terms of uh, kind of like the right person or personality? Um, what are some traits that you think you would be looking for uh, that would make a really good information technology professional? Um, I mentioned this earlier, but flexibility is, is really important because we don't, business is like really, um, I don't know the right word. You don't really know what's going to happen like tomorrow or whatever. And then IT is kind of, uh, it has to, it serves the business needs. So whatever is required, like you have to kind of fulfill that requirement as an, as an IT person. So just, just be as flexible as possible. I mean, you don't have to, you know, bend over too much, like 
where you're, it's really sucking, but just kind of keep an open mind, I suppose. And the second thing would be, um, be really, really open to criticism. In fact, I would like recommend seeking criticism out because it's really, it's really hard for people to give negative criticism, even though that's like the, it's like the most valuable thing that you can get. Um, cause it's kind of a, an opportunity for you to like, you know, self reflect and, and think about the criticism and then have an opportunity to kind of grow, not saying all negative criticism is going to be useful, but I would seek it out and like be really good at taking that negative criticism. Um, I've had a, a lot of opportunities cause I, I try to get criticism from people and I'm really, really flexible. Um, I've had, you know, people, when I was a contractor, they try to like make me work full time or they'll try to poach me from somewhere else because I've worked with them before and I'm, I'm like really like, kind of flexible in the workplace. So flexibility and accept criticism well will take you like really, really far.